Hi everyone, welcome. I'm about to head down to my wormery to check in on my two rectangular yellow buckets in which we've got African night crawlers living. And yeah, I should probably be using the yellow color for these buckets, but it's the two rows that are right below the yellow strip, these two red ones showing where we fed them last time 13 days ago. And the um, number out here indicates their age. 183 days ago, we launched these buckets and you know during the last check in 13 days ago we talked about coming back on day 182 which just happens to be the same age those systems were 182 when we bought an end to the yellow buckets running last time because in my mind 182 is one half of a year except on a leap year which happens to be this year and it does happen to be February so we're only a few weeks away from hitting February 29th, which only happens once every four years. And then I was reminded that 183 on a leap year is really where you hit half a year, and only on a leap year. So instead of coming in yesterday at 182 days of age, I figured today would be the day to come in and celebrate their six months in service, half a year, and check in on how they're doing, give them a feeding. So I'm going to head out down to the wormery now and get these buckets out on the bench we're going to get them fed so let's get started what i've got for the wormies today is in this little plastic tray it's not a whole lot but it's an assortment of different stuff like uh i don't even know <laughs> all kinds of little bits and pieces of stuff random things and for bedding we're going to use something similar to what we used last time which was just some soiled pieces of napkin or paper towel or whatever these are we were trying over the past few check-ins to try to bring the moisture level in these systems down and those paper products just like we're doing today were added in dry most of the time I'll try to use a, um, a dampened prepared bedding in my worm bin feedings unless I'm looking to dry things off so I'll put in dry bedding in the hopes that it absorbs some of the system's moisture I do really like the way things look out here on the surface Seems like the worms have been coming up and hanging out on the surface, leaving their castings behind. And you don't have to go far below the surface to find some of these little African night crawlers hanging out. The, uh, the feeding they got last time, I'm assuming, is going to show up in a pretty good quantity as leftovers, because whenever I feed citrus peel, the stuff does tend to sit around a little bit. But you can see worms are nestled right in between the food. Perfectly happy to be consuming that yummy orange peel. And I can totally smell the orange peel as we start to probe down into the system. So I think this right here is proof positive. The worms really don't mind citrus. They're quite happy to come, you know, come out and enjoy the tasty flavor and the juiciness of it I believe that each of these systems did actually get half of a tangerine so it's not just peel it is also a little juicy piece of fruit that each system was fed last time 13 days ago Whenever I shoot these handheld shots in the video editor, I'll always run them through the tracker to try to stabilize the shot. And I'm just wondering how jittery it's going to be because, ouch, <laughs> it, it was actually quite painful holding that thing still leaning up on the edge of the uh, bucket that way. But I'm sure the stabilizer will do a good job and take out the shakiness I can already see some of the uh, I believe this was some of the paper that was put in here as supplementary bedding during the last check-in some of the napkin or paper towel or whatever it might have been I figured I would try to just tear it up a little bit just to try to increase its accessibility and surface area to break down so that was kind of fun looking at all those 
worms hanging out there on that uh, little piece of orange peel. They definitely seem to like it. I don't think they're complaining. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's try to bring this check in to a quick close. I want to get over to feeding bucket number two as well. And I don't think we have to make a tremendous amount of space for this feeding because there's not a lot of food to give them today. I'm already seeing some of the stuff that we encountered last time as leftovers too. There was chunks of banana peel that we bumped into last time and I just set some of it aside. Looks like it's still holding up here as leftovers. And there's a pretty good bit of moisture down here as well. I'm sure the worms don't mind. It just seems like it would be a little bit of a nuisance if we were attempting at some point soon to harvest the castings and try to perhaps sift the material or something like that. A muddy, sticky material like this would not easily go through a sifter. So why don't we um, bring in one of these two napkins I figured we would use as the supplementary bedding for today's feeding. And then we could drop in a little bit of this, a little bit of that from this assortment of foods that we bought down here for them. I believe there is a chunk of banana peel in here that we can try to tear in half so that both systems get a piece of it. This here is some potato peel. And some of this stuff might have um, not been thrown in here in such a way that we can divvy it out evenly. This is cucumber, but it does seem like there's another chunk of cucumber here we can leave for the next system and then we just happen to have two pieces of strawberry in here too so it does look like we could divvy out this feeding in a pretty fair way so that both systems receive a fair shake at the assortment of stuff so let's provide this feeding with a little bit of pulverized eggshell which is the grit that my worms receive and then I think we could start proceeding with the return of the leftovers yeah regrettably right on top of some of the frozen stuff so I'm sure it's not gonna be well received by the wormies as they get placed on top of a bunch of freezing stuff so perhaps it's not so important to bring all the leftovers back in maybe we could just sort of use some of this material here on the side to try covering up what is this big wad of stuff it's not orange peel, that's for sure. This might just be more... Huh? It had some orange peel in it, but this right here is just another chunk of paper, which we can, once again, try to tear up a little bit and submerge below the surface. Okay. Things are looking pretty good in here. Let's get them covered up, and then we could... Uh, Bring in bucket number two and get them fed as well. Whenever I'm feeding two systems like this that are same age, same setup and everything like that, I do assume that I'm going to find very similar setups in both systems. But there was a, um, a test conducted here in bucket number two for a while. I set it and forget it test if you remember during which time for the course of over the course of seven weeks we simply um, did not do anything in here we just kind of peeked under the plastic once in a while gave ourselves about a 10 minute glimpse not 10 minute perhaps a 10 second glimpse at to what was happening just to make sure everything was appearing to be in good shape before we started the test we did load the system up with wet leaves all the way right up to the rim practically just so they would have plenty of bedding to work on and we let it we let it just ride you know so uh, that was the one main difference during which time this system didn't really receive any foods it was just left to its own devices and we came in regularly into bin number one bucket number one to give them feedings so that means the overall feeding count of these two systems is not equal the um, the system that we're looking at here 
received maybe four or five fewer feedings. But that was part of the test, and it was interesting. But for the past, um, I don't even know how long it's been now, you know. Uh, I think we took the test up to day 100, if I'm not mistaken. So if we're at day 183 now, yeah, we're now, you know, 83 days in the rearview mirror. So it's been some time since that ended. You know, many of my assortments of food do include little chunks of, you know, lemon peel or, well, maybe chunks of lemon that just didn't get consumed or orange peel or lime or whatever. Little bits of citrus here and there, but the, um, the last feeding was almost kind of like a, a citrus or orange test because it was nothing other than orange peel and a little chunk of whole, well, half of a little tangerine. Actually, that might be this right here. Yep. So I did have one tangerine that went bad, which I cut in half. And that's what we're seeing here. A little bit of the actual fruit remaining within the peel here. So I wondered if we'd even be able to locate it since it is a fairly small object. And even though I don't think we saw it in the other one, or at least I don't recall seeing it outright, it, um, it was probably in similar shape is what we saw here. So um, I think we're in a good position here to drop in today's feeding for bucket number two. I believe we've got sufficient space to return the leftovers as well as place in the newly applied foods and be able to cover up at the end. So let's bring in this other dry napkin, which I believe, like the last few feedings, which included dry bedding materials, will be beneficial in absorbing a little bit of the system's moisture content, which still to me feels a little bit excessive in here too. It does seem like, you know, systems like this do um, have a very good ability to hang on to their moisture content possibly because of the lack of surface area I mean obviously we're covering with plastic too so that probably contributes as well so now we had some leftover chunks of paper that we saw early on let's see if we can just help some of this stuff along too by just Shredding it up a little bit if we can. My little one-handed acrobatics here. And return all these leftover scraps to the feeding zone as well before we start covering up here. So we've got a little bit of loose material that we can cover up with over on this side. Over here it seems like we could even maybe till up a little bit just to not only cover up but also just take a quick little peek to see how things look I think things look really nice both systems look really nice you know so oh, there goes my furnace usually I'll shut the doors behind me when I enter my wormery to try to minimize the noise of the <laughs> furnace should it decide to turn on so hopefully it's not creating too much of a racket here but we're done anyway so it doesn't matter too much it's a somewhat warmer day I'm actually in my short sleeves down here now. Usually in the winter time, I've got to, uh, you know, wear a little jacket. My wormery jacket is usually what I'll end up putting on, but I'm wearing only a t-shirt now. It's a little bit chilly, but a lot more tolerable than usual. Didn't really expect the furnace to turn on. But that's it for the video, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.